Hello, Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. I believe it's working again today. Guess who's here? <laughs> How did you end up here? <laughs> My wife, Virginia, Pastor Virginia Betts. Hi, everybody. Today is a beautiful day. Yeah, it is. So give God the praise of being here today and everything. Nice. <laughs> Shouldn't expect to be here. Hey. <laughs> oh, God help us. Pastor Joe here, Host Foot Ranch Ministry, Sunday's message, 12 p.m., Jasper, Georgia. Thank you all for being here. Friends, family, and people that serve in our ministry, our friends in... Um, in Philippines, and Africa, and New York, and Atlanta, and uh, Vietnam, different places, Pakistan. Thank you all for being here. Uh, today's message, Sincere Salvation, it's, we're kind of kind of going to bounce around different places, okay? Father God, as I, as I speak, please help me, Father God, speak through me, use me to speak your truth, your love. Your power. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read real quickly to start in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. The writer of Hebrews is speaking about Jesus being our, uh, becoming our high priest and him being our sacrifice, not the sacrifice of animals. Verse 13, under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremony and impurity. Verse 14, just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our, our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For, the, by, for by the power of the eternal, I don't have trouble speaking today, I've got to slow down. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people, so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under the first covenant. <clears throat> Verse 14, you know, just think about the blood of Jesus, how he sacrificed his blood for us. It's a And in doing so, when we come to Christ, and we ask for forgiveness of our sins, we recognize what Christ has done for us and who he is. We are cleansed from all the stuff that we've done. Why does snow? We're clean, we're cleansed. And it says, and the writer of Hebrews is saying, also, so that we can worship the living God. So we can really worship him. So when we're worshiping God, instead of being ridden by the guilt of sin, we can be free of it and worship, knowing we are right with Him, knowing God is our Father, our Creator, is pleased with us. The Bible says you can't please God without without faith. No faith, you can't please Him, your Father. You know, today's message, Sincere Salvation, kind of where I started with that is we did some, um, let's call street ministry, uh, Mike, Glenn, and myself on Thursday this week. We're getting much more active again, going out to the streets, and it was it was just what well, it was just beautiful. We, it was a rainy day, so instead of going to one spot, we just went to underpasses, or overpasses underneath them, and we just you know you go in there and you're wondering like what is anything you know what's going to happen, and you're kind of thinking on yourself, you know what do I do? Where do we go? And you just let the Holy Spirit lead you, and we had many divine appointments. I mean, with people that we were there at the right time for them, that God had ordained set things up. It was just beautiful. And the reason, the title of today's message, Sincere Salvation, what does that mean? Well, 
met a, met a man, William, and ministered to him for quite a while, and a homeless man, and prayed for deliverance for some things in his life. And he received it. And then I, you know, explained to him the Holy Spirit can heal someone. It's biblical, you know, and even now, the Holy Spirit can heal someone that's not a believer. But I said, as a believer, the Holy Spirit takes up full-time residence. Instead of being just healed from me praying for you, that Holy Spirit starts living in you forever. And you could always go to the Holy Spirit at any time. You don't need me to be there or anybody else. God's Spirit living you is there. And I said, have you been saved? And he said, I, I don't remember. I don't I don't know. And if I, if I am, I'm not good at, you know, if not, what if I fall back? And he's going on and on and on. And how could I be saved if I do the things that I do or I, or I fall back into the things that I do? And then, of course, I explained to him, that's when you come to Christ. You don't come, you know, I, I, and that's what I call sincere salvation. I've met many people that actually had the right attitude in the sense of being sincere and not just going, yeah, Jesus, you know, and it's good. Yes, it's always good to raise your hand. Yes, Jesus, of course. But in your heart, you know, and Romans, Romans, let's read this. Romans chapter 10, you know, one of the most famous used scriptures in the Bible for salvation and uh, this also applies to uh, us that w went into the city. Uh, ch uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 15. Apostle Paul speaking to the church about salvation. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart <laughs> that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. By believing in your heart, not your head, not your brains, not just reading the scripture here and something, but by believing in your heart, you made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They are the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is what the scriptures say. How beautiful are the feet the messengers to bring the good news. And, you know, you don't go over there for the blessing, but when you, when God sends you out and you, and you, Marcus, hello, thank you for being here. When God sends you out, and that's everywhere, whether he's sent to the streets of Atlanta or, um, or some other country or Chicago or India, wherever it could be, or your neighbor, when God sends you out, which is a constant, when God sends you out to spread the gospel, you don't go for the blessing, but we are blessed. It's, it's always a blessing. Even when you don't want to go. When we were driving in Thursday, all of us had a lot going on, and none of us really, we were all talking a little bit like I, uh, but about halfway, halfway into Atlanta, we were getting blessed already because we were, God softened our hearts to serve and not be thinking about stuff we had to do. And then we got blessed, of course. I'm still blessed. And a sincere heart. This man that I was, and many people we spoke to, there's one man I'm speaking about, his sincere heart. When we come to Jesus, it's with our heart, not our brain. And there's many people that say they're saved. And this is part of a message today. It's a message a little convoluted. But part of our message today is being be aware of stillborn Christians. Stillborn Christians. People that say they're Christian, that fill up churches, 
that never gave their heart to Jesus, never gave their heart to God. It can't be with the head. It can't be because someone talks you into it. it can't be because, yes, it's got to be with your heart. It doesn't have to be with a whole lot of your heart. You come to Jesus dirty. He fixes you and cleans you up. That's what I was explaining to William. you got a sincere heart. What a good way to come to Christ. you got a sincere heart. You're being honest about yourself. And you're trying to say, if I come to Christ, how do I come to Christ and I do this stuff? And I, I said, you come to Christ with your stuff. He bears your burden. When you come to Christ, he gives you God's Holy Spirit to live in you. God's Holy Spirit gives you victory over your problems, your addictions, your sins. You come to Christ dirty. Christ is the one who gives you a bath. Christ is the one who fixes you. So, there's so many stillborn Christians, I call them stillborn Christians out there, that we, by the way, if you're right now listening to this message, and you're not sure if you gave your life to Christ, you can, oh, I ask you, are you born again believer? Well, I've been going to church since I was 10 years old. I didn't ask you if you attend church. Are you born again? Are you a follower of Christ? Well, I go to the Methodist church. I'm not asking you what denomination, nope, or how long you've been going. That's not an answer. Are you a born again believer? Yes. Are you a follower of Christ? Yes, I am. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Will you go to heaven someday? Yes, I will. Does God's Holy Spirit live in you? Living your Holy Spirit living you full time? Yes. Does God's Holy Spirit manifest in your life and others around you? Yes. Do you believe in miracles? Yes. It's a Christian. That's a, that's a child of God. So as if you're not a Christian, if, if you're not sure if you're a Christian now, but you're not, give your life to Christ. It's not hard. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. That Jesus died for you. And he rose from the dead. Defeated death. Three days later. Boom. Rose from the dead. Holes in his hands. A hole in his side. Yet. He appeared in a room. Out of a room. Through doors. Not opening a door. Was hungry. Ate fish and bread. Believe. Just a little bit in that. God will open you up. And give you. It's a gift from God. Faith anyway. Just ask him for it. Ask Jesus to be your Lord. Be your Savior, King. God's Holy Spirit will move right into you. You become a child of God instantly. And then, He really can fix you up. And then His Holy Spirit lives in you full time, working in you. Besides Jesus in heaven, behind the scenes, as your advocate on the right-hand side of God, as your advocate working for you, besides angels working for you, God's Holy Spirit full time lives in you. That's what we get. Psalms 51. I know I'm bouncing around a bit. Psalms 51, when King David had sinned in a, it greatly, Bathsheba putting his, her husband on the front line, he died. The great King David really messed up and he paid a price for it. His family, he and his family. And Psalms 51 is awesome when he when he's praying to God, you know, bring me back in, forgive me of my sins, don't purify me, don't hold it against me, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. And verse 7, he says, Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Um, I think in King James, that's that's New Living Translation I have. I think King James, they, they say, wash me with hyssop. And that was a, a, a shrub. It's a shrub in the Caspian Sea area. And it was used as, it's used as an antiseptic cough um, reliever and uh, an expectorant and um, ancient medical uh, herb. And it means to purify you, the inside of you, clean you, wash you white as snow. That's what you get with Jesus. And Isaiah, the great prophet Isaiah, 
chapter 53, speaking from God. Speaking about Jesus, thousands of years before he died for us, speaking about this, because he was a great prophet from God. But he was pierced for our rebellion. Crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we can be, we could be, he was beaten so we could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. So when we come to Christ, because of what Christ did for us, we are to be made whole, cleaned, forgiven our sins, washed white as snow, made healed, and made whole. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 3, Peter is preaching to the to the church. He's, pe he's, pre no, he's preaching to the people that crucified Christ. And verse 17. I'm going to go verse 16. Bear with me. I know I'm bouncing around a bit here. Through faith in the name of Jesus. They're talking about, you know, he healed the, the, the lame man. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends. He says, friends. I'm going to bounce back for a second. He's speaking to the people that crucified, crucified Jesus. He says, friends. Back to stillborn Christians. Or even Christians. You know, when you're saved, there's a change in your life. Sometimes it's more drastic for some people than others. But when you... Hello, Liz. Thanks for being here. <laughs> when you confess to be a, a, a Christian, not that nobody's perfect, but when you profess to be a Christian and there's no change in your life, there's no visible evidence... God's Holy Spirit produces fruit in us. God's Holy Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And when none of that, none of that changes in your life, nothing changes. When you look at that person, you can't see any evidence. We as Christians aren't supposed to gossip about that person or look down on that person. So if you're not a believer, and you're living like hell, we are not supposed to point fingers at you. When we have leaders and polit political leaders that just do stuff that just drives us crazy, we're not supposed to sit there and gossip about it and complain all the time about it. We're supposed to pray for them. Jesus says, keep your eyes open. Yes, we're supposed to be aware of what's happening in the world around us. But we're supposed to be thinking about higher things, thinking about heavenly things, because the battles are fought in heavenly places. Spiritual battles. So, as... People we can if we consider people certain people even in politics our enemy, pray for them. That's what we're supposed to do. Pray for them. And if we have people that are professed to be Christians and we just they just bug us because of what they do and we just don't see any evidence, pray for them. And be forgiving. Not to be a doormat, not to be stupid and asleep. Be open and be aware, but pray for them and put a hand out to them. Because it's very possible they're not even saved. This church building full of people that are not born again believers. They're not Christians. They attend church. Back to Acts. So, Peter, friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah that he must suffer these things. Now, Repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through the prophets. 
So he's saying to them, repent. Turn from your sins, turn to God. You will get times of refreshment. If Peter, as close to Jesus as he was, if Peter, Hello, Robert. Thanks for being here. If Peter can say this and speak for God, because the Holy Spirit now was living in Peter, if Peter could say this to the people that were responsible for crucifying Christ, and he's saying, turn from your sins, turn to God. Another part of the scripture says, and the Holy Spirit will be given to you. You know, I first got saved living, yes, I was married to my wife, being faithful to my life, living a better life when I got saved, but I still didn't believe in God. I was still doing, not hard, a lot of drugs, but I was still doing, um, still smoking pot and a lot of cigarettes and, and uh, drinking and everything else when I got saved. And he stopped that real quick, all of that. I didn't deserve it at all. I didn't deserve salvation. I didn't deserve God to forgive me. I didn't deserve what Jesus did, just like these people didn't deserve it. But God is such an awesome God. He wants to be everyone's father. It's only way for God to have access to God as our father, not just our creator, but as a father. The only way is through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, and Jesus is speaking. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. One more point here today. And I know, I don't know if, if it's holding together for you all or not. I know I'm bouncing a bit here. James, half-brother of Christ. James chapter 3, verse 17. And he's speaking about the wisdom that comes from God, which is given to his children. But the wisdom, and the reason I'm reading this, you know, I know we titled this Sincere Salvation, but we're talking a lot about sincerity, the condition of our heart, how you get into the kingdom, and how we are to speak think about other people. We're supposed to look through the filter of Jesus when we look at the world, when we look at the non-believers, we look at the enemy, we look at government situations, we look at what's going on in our cultures here and elsewhere in the world. And as we look at people that profess to be Christians that like, huh? A lot of this relates to that. How we should have sincere hearts. A sincere heart is not a heart full of pride. It's a heart, less of us, more of God. It's a heart where we're trying to be like Jesus. And we're giving the Holy Spirit a place to produce good fruit in. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure. It is also peace-loving and gentle at all times. And willing to yield to others. Now, is that you and me? Pure. Pure from God, not tainted by lies, tainted by some of our own stupid thinking or selfish thinking, or thinking that's tainted by jealousy, or bad self-esteem, etc., etc. But the wisdom from heaven is, first of all, pure. It is also peace-loving and gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. Now, that doesn't mean yielding to sin, or being a doormat, but yielding to others, listening to others, witnessing of some of the non-Christian, witnessing to them in a gentle, loving way. It is full of mercy. 
and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. Those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Children of God, this is who we are. And sometimes, often, this gets in the way. The old us. Being born again because we're new. New creations in Christ. It's not I who live anymore, but Christ who lives in me. That's who we are. And you can't run from that. And when we, when we try to, we're not very happy. We're not productive for the Lord. We're not in alignment with our Father. And you know, when you're in alignment, sisters and brothers, men and women, children, when old people, when you're in alignment with your Father, everything works better. We don't do it for the blessing, but we get blessed. We're in alignment. You know, man, I, I forgive you. You get a car that's out of alignment real bad. You let go of the wheel and it goes off the road. And you damage the car or you, you hit a ditch or you hit a tree or you get hurt. Everyone, let's be sincere with our hearts. If you're coming into the kingdom now, with just a little bit of your heart, be sincere. Not perfect, full of sin, needing a good bath by Jesus, but be sincere. And brothers and sisters in Christ, let's be, not putting on a show, I'm a Christian, let's be sincere with who we are, with our faults where we need more help from God, and be sincere in how we treat the outside world, the world full of sin, the angry world. And be sincere with our brothers and sisters that need a hand. I'm going to end here. Got to get to the church building for our one o'clock service today. Father God, thank you for using me I love giving these messages out. Thank you for using the internet to reach people in all different places I don't, that I don't even know. And I'm sorry, God, I don't do a better job. I'm just a fragile vessel that contains this great treasure. I pray, Father God, help us, Holy Spirit, to be the people not timid, but strong, and loving, and sincere, and powerful to be the people that you want us to be, to fulfill the plans you made for us before we were born. Help us, Father God. Help us, Holy Spirit, that lives in us. Help us. We come to you. We repent of our sins. We turn to you, our only source. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And if you don't know us, check us out on Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries.org. And we have a website that's pretty up to date. And uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. God bless you all. Have an awesome day. Bye.